Hi, welcome to Knowing Him. It's Pastor Mark and Rhonda Garver. We're so glad that you joined us. Uh, we want to help you. We want to talk about how to receive something that the world, a doctor, someone has called impossible. And uh, if it's impossible with men, all that means is it's possible with God. The Word of God clearly says all things are possible with God. And then in the Gospel of Mark, it says all things are possible them, to them that believe. And so Rhonda, we're just going to look um, at what the Word of God says in Romans, the fourth chapter, because here we have Abraham and Sarah, and they can't have a child, and yet God's promised them a child, and it's impossible. And so we know that if it's impossible with man, it's possible with God. But there are also um, steps, if you will, or ways to receive anything that God says you can have, even though it looks impossible in the natural, you can have it. And not only was Abraham and Sarah's situation impossible, it was doubly impossible. Yes. She was infertile when she was young. Yep. And now she ain't young no more. <laughs> the Bible says, you know, it had ceased to be with her even after the ways of women. She was, what, 90 when she had um, Isaac. Yeah. And so, you know, they had old age working against yep. them. They had their body working against them. But when she was young, she couldn't conceive. Amen. And so it wasn't just uh, impossible. It was doubly impossible. But yet, following the steps the Word lays out, they obtained the impossible. Amen. They reached into... Uh, the realm of the spirit where there is no impossibility and brought it into into their current situation. So you're going to read in Romans chapter 4? Yeah, Romans 4. Um, we'll start at verse 16. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not, only, not to that only which is of the law, but to also that which was of the faith of Abraham, talking about us, who is the father of us all. So he's our father of faith. But we're going to look at verse 17 and we're going to talk about that just for a few minutes. And just want to encourage you that Abraham uh, did this. He's the father of our faith. The Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul gave us this in the book of Romans. And really what they're saying is if you'll do this out of your heart, then you can get the same results. So verse 17, why don't you read that? As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. So what, what we're going to talk about just briefly is we're going to talk about reminding you and or maybe for the first time you're ever hearing that if you want something that's impossible that God has promised you, Faith always begins where the will of God is known. And God promised them a son, told him to call him Isaac. But they had to change something. The Bible says here, and he calls those things that be not as though they were. He be, Abraham and Sarah begin to change what they were saying about their situation. And the deal is this, honey. I think it even needs to back up a little further than that because faith begins where the will of God is known. God said to them, I have made thee a father of many nations. He, that's what God called them. Yep. So they have to, to, to believe the speaker. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I could say uh, and know what he said. I could say, I'm a car, I'm a car, I'm a car, but it ain't going to make me a car. <laughs> Uh, because, you know, faith begins where the will of God is known. Yeah. God clearly made His yep. will known. God spoke to them. So they chose to believe God. Yep. And, and in that believing then their words, they aligned their words to be in agreement with what God said to them Amen. because they believed Him. Amen. You know, it reminds me of what the Apostle Paul said. He said, I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded yes. that He is able. Yeah. He is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. So he knew, yeah. he knew the speaker. Yeah. He knew that the, the um, character of God. He knew that God was faithful to his words. Um, and, and Abraham had to be convinced that God really was God, that he yeah. really is true to his word. And he took that promise and he followed it back to the mouth of God and became convinced and then out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth began Amen. to speak. Amen. So he began to put himself through his belief in agreement with God. And those words began to roll up out of him. I am the father of many nations. Amen. I am. God said I am. Yeah. Therefore I am. Amen. You know, you can say lots of positive things, but if you don't follow them back to the mouth of the speaker, I, I mean, who said that? Yeah. 
Did God say it? If God said it, yeah. then you can believe it and you can begin to say it about yourself and it will come to pass. Amen. Well, if, if you and I can understand that when God says something, then we have to begin to change what we say to agree with him. You know, we're not just trying to get you a principle. We're not trying to just say, it, just do it like a robot. If you don't have faith in the one who said it, yes. then, then it's going to be impossible. But one of the things you've got to know with God is uh, he does things by words. In the very beginning, uh, the earth was, you know, dark, void, a mess. And God said, let there be light. He didn't say darkness go away. He said, let there be light. And so here, what he's trying to get Abraham and Sarah to do is to begin to call themselves what God said they were or call themselves as God sees it. God said, you're the father of many nations, even so much that Abraham and Sarah changed their name from uh, um, Sarai and um, Abram. Abram. Uh, and so when he even had them change their name to remind them that now they're going to be the father and the mother of many nations. Abraham means the father of many nations, right? Something right, like that. Right. Yeah. And so it's important to realize that God is asking you no longer like if the situation's impossible to not talk about the situation anymore, but see it as finished. And now you line your words up with God's word and to begin to call it as God said it was, not as you currently see it. If you'll begin to do that and, and follow what God said back to his mouth and begin to say what he says about it, then your situation's gonna be changed. We're gonna pick up here next time. This is Pastor Mark and Rhonda Garver. We want you to know him so you too can make him known.